I'm gonna stick it in the ignition. And then when I go to start it, it starts blinking fast. The reason that that's blinking Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Today we're sitting in our brand new Ford Mustang. I wanna talk about keys. When we bought this car, it had just this one key. Now this key is a key fob. It has door unlock, lock, and also panic, and a trunk release. The trunk release does not work on this key. Plus, I don't like having only one key for my car. I have purchased this key, which is a factory replacement from Amazon. I will put a link in the description where you can get this key. What I'm about to show you will work on any car pretty much from about 2019 and older. This particular key, it comes uncut. It's currently cut now and that's because I took it to my local hardware store and just said, can you please cut this key? they should do that for you. Now in Canada, I've had the most success going to home hardware. Home hardware still has the old machine where it clamps it in and then it traces the key out. If it is a newer machine where they just stick it in, like what a Walmart has, they may not cut the key for you. That's because they will check if it has a chip. And if it does, they will not cut it because they say that that can damage the chip, the vibration, and it can. I have programmed hundreds of keys and I have seen damaged chips. Now that the key is cut and I can use it in the ignition, I will show you what happens with a proper key and this cut key. This is the regular key, so I'm gonna stick it in. And on the dash here, the key lock indicator showing. So when I stick it in, it'll blink once and the car will fire right up, no issue. Now I'm gonna take this key out I'm going to take this cut key and stick it in the ignition. And then when I go to start it, it starts blinking fast. The reason that that's blinking, before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. The reason that that's blinking is because this key has not been programmed, so we need to program it. So I know you're wondering what we're gonna use to program it. It's not super easy. We are going to use special hardware. This hardware is available again on Amazon. It is very inexpensive. It's actually cheaper to buy the key from Amazon and this programmer than it is to pay somebody to provide you the key, cut it and program it. So you can do this once and have this forever. This is the CK100 programmer. It plugs into your standard OBD2 port and it will program hundreds of different keys with different manufacturers. It will program this Ford Mustang. It programs most Fords, most Chevys, most Pontiacs, all of that. The first thing we need to do is plug in the OBD2 connector. So it's gonna be underneath here. Plug it in, make sure it's good and snug. It will immediately power on. First thing we're gonna be greeted with is the serial number and the last update is from 2014. This is kind of old. I'm gonna press F1 to continue. Now, once I'm in my main menu, I'm gonna to go to Immobilizer. I'm gonna press Enter, and then we're gonna just pick our vehicle. I'm gonna press this button. It tabs through the pages. We're gonna go until we see F, Ford, and we want Ford USA. Enter. Now it's gonna ask what kind of Ford is this? Mustang. This particular Mustang is a 2010 to 2012. Enter. Now it's going to say press any key. I'm going to press any key. Now it says insert a key and turn on the console. I'm going to take my new key and I'm going to stick it in like that and I'm going to turn it on to position two. Then I'm going to hit enter. And it's gonna say, please wait, connecting. There we go. Now it's gonna say, what do you wanna do? Program new keys, present errors, or errors reset. Now if I go present errors, it's probably gonna give me an error for unknown key. So detected one errors, and it's Pat's key failure. That's okay, because I know 
that I tried to use an unprogrammed key in here. So I'm going to reset that. Delete errors. Yes, terminated. Escape. There we go. Now, I want to program new keys. And we can go erase all keys. I do not recommend erasing all keys. The reason I say not to erase all keys is because this key still works. I have erased all keys before and then had a heck of a time trying to program a new key. If you erase all keys, this key will also stop working. I can go number of keys in memory, so I can push that. It will connect and then it'll say, there is two keys in memory. And again, I have one key. So somewhere out there is a Ford key that will work on this car. And I don't know who has that key, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go to add a key. I'm gonna press enter. And it's gonna say, add a key, insert the new key turn ignition on. So I still have the key in and it is still on. This is the new key. This right here is the old key. Now I'm going to press enter and it's going to say safety access procedure elapsed time two of max 800 seconds. 800 seconds is about 13 and a half minutes. The reason is it is a safety lockout procedure. If somebody had gotten a hold of one of these tools. And if they somehow figured out what your key code was and created a new key for your car based on that key code. For example, right now, somebody is looking at this key and they know exactly what the key code is for this key. That's because each individual cut at each specific location is actually coded to a specific number to where somebody could make this key just from having a picture of this key. If they got a picture of the key, made a key, knew where my car was, found my car, came to my car and brought this tool with them, they would have to sit in my driveway for 13 and a half minutes doing exactly what I'm doing right now just to program the key so they could steal my car. This is more of a deterrent system than anything. Most auto manufacturers have some sort of a lockout. Now, depending on the programmer that you have, it may have a lockout bypass. And that's what that would mean when you're looking at different programmers and options that they have. This particular one does not have a lockout bypass in the sense that it will not bypass the timer, but usually around 799 seconds, the safety access procedure will be complete and it will unlock the car and allow it to accept the new key. Chevy does this as well. What Dodge does is they have a safety code, an access code, and this programmer asks you for that access code. If you are programming a different car and it's asking you for that safety access code, sometimes you can call your dealership and they will give it to you over the phone or you have to come in and prove that you own the vehicle before they will give you that access code. It is your car. It is your code. You own that code. The dealership has an obligation to release that code to you. Other manufacturers like Nissan has a access code as well. Mitsubishi does. A lot of those manufacturers have access codes rather than a timeout. The Ford has just a timeout procedure. No code is required. I'm gonna sit here. I will show you when it's done and what it looks like. Here we are just over halfway through, 500 seconds of 800. It is very important that you do not play with this or with your key while this procedure is taking place. I have seen this procedure fail before. I have sat for the 13 and a half minutes and at 13.3 minutes, it has failed and I've had to redo it. Now it will fail for a number of reasons. Sometimes it just fails. It's just a fact of life and trying it again is what's required to make it work. Sometimes it fails because the chip isn't working. Sometimes it fails because you picked the wrong vehicle. Sometimes it fails because something's wrong with the vehicle. Sometimes it fails because the battery died. Keep in mind, we've got the ignition on right now. My battery indicator there is on saying, hey, start your car, your battery's gonna die. We're, you know, taking some risks here. Plus, keep in mind, this is just a Chinese knockoff piece of equipment. It is not manufacturer spec equipment. It timed out and it says the key has been stored. Press any key. So I'm gonna press the any key. That's this one right here, it says enter. And it says, do you want to save customer data? I always say no, it doesn't matter. And then it takes us back to this. Now, let's shut the key off. We're gonna cycle this. This is the cut 
key. Last time when we stuck it in, we got the lockout battery thing here. So I'm gonna try and start it. And there we go. The car is now running with that key. I still have the original key here, which will make sure it works still. We'll take this one out. This is the brand new key. We'll put it up there where we can see it. This is the original key. I always make sure that the original key still works. Just like that, just to be sure. You need to understand that in this case, it does not program this part of the fob. These buttons still do not work. That's okay because there is a separate procedure for programming those buttons. This key will open the door and it will start the car, which is what we wanted to do. We are finished with this programmer so I can unplug it and we can set that aside over here. What I want to do is program these buttons for the key fob. And the way you're gonna do that is take the original key, you wanna stick this in here, we're gonna cycle it on and off eight times. We're gonna leave it on on the eighth time. Because this is a dual headed key and it can go either way, you want to do it this way so that when it's on, the buttons are accessible. And that'll be important in a minute. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now that it's locked and you've put it into program mode like that, the horn honks and then we push this. You can hear the doors lock. And that has programmed this key fob and this one should still work. And this is the new one. So if you follow these steps, you can program your Ford key or pretty much any other manufacturer. There's a long list of manufacturers that this programmer works with. So far, I have found that compatibility is actually quite high and this is one of the most cost effective programmers that you can get. This one, the trunk popper wasn't working on. And if I push it, it just, it just never worked. But now this one, there you go. So you can see that works perfectly now. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. and We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.